Hello there, I'm going to show you how to use a Visual Basic function, so using a bit of VBA behind an Excel workbook, to connect to a SQL Server database. So you'll see I have a simple worksheet in this workbook, a um, little bit of customer information, customer ID, account number, date the um, record was last modified. What I haven't got in the actual data here though is anything to do with the sales data, the orders that these customers have placed. But what I want to do is to be able to just show the total revenue that these customers have placed with us. Now that sales data is available through a SQL Server database system. So if I click into one of these cells, I'll just click into D703 as it happens to be. And if we look at the formula bar at the top, we can see that it calls a function called lookup AW customer revenue. And then I'm passing in cell reference 703. Well, that's this one over here customer ID 11,000. Now that function is not a built-in Excel function. That is one that I have written in VBA and it's sitting in the VBA project behind this workbook. So let's go and take a look at it. Now you'll notice I'm already on the developer tab here. Um, the developer tab can be added to your ribbons if um, it's not already there just through the options within Excel workbook. What I'm going to do is click on the Visual Basic option over here and that takes me straight into the VBA editor. Now when we look at this, you will see that I currently have a module called Module 1 open and that is where my function is actually located. So this function here is called Lookup AW Customer Revenue. What we can see is it's a public function. That basically means I can call it from anywhere in this workbook. And we will also note that we're passing into this function a value. So we have a variable declared inside the parentheses here, int ID with the data type long. So that's the customer ID number that we're going to send into this function when we call it. Now the as currency part here indicates that this function is going to return a currency value. So into the actual structural definition of this function then. Firstly, we have declared three variables. The first one is a connection variable, which we'll use to actually create the connection to the SQL Server instance in the database. The second one, RS, is a record set object variable, and that is the one that's going to hold the actual results, the records coming back from the select statement. And then finally, we have a simple string, which is going to be the string that we use to uh, connect to the SQL Server instance. Now, when we call this function, we are expecting it to be called with a number. If, for some reason, there is no customer ID value in the cell that's referenced when we call it initially, that's going to go in as an empty value or a null. Now, with long variables, they will be initialized to a value of zero. So we need to handle the fact that we could call this function without a, a valid value, without a value. So this first little if statement here is just checking to make sure that int ID well, if it is set to zero, then we return a revenue value of zero. So we're basically saying, look, there is no revenue, there is no customer. Assuming we do get a customer ID number passed through, we then set the connection string. So you can see here we're connecting to um, a SQL Server instance called SQL 2014. And we are using OLADB to do that. The database we're working on is AdventureWorks 2014 and we're assigning that to initial catalog. And then finally, the authentication method we're using is Windows authentication. So we have integrated security equals SSPI. So all of that is a bit of string concatenation to create that one long string. The space underscore you're seeing here has enabled us to split that line over two lines. That's a, a visual basic requirement. Next up, then we initialize our connection variable by calling the adodb.connection object type. And then we open the connection. So con.open, open is a method associated with a connection object, and we pass in the connection string held in our string variable. So we now have a connection to our SQL Server instance, AdventureWorks 2014 database. Next up then, we need to execute the select statement you will see that we are calling the execute method of the connection object variable, and we're passing in a select statement. Another bit of string concatenation here. First part is selecting the sum of a column called total due, which will be located in sales.salesorderheader. 
our table in the underlying database that contains all the sales records. We have a where clause there, which limits it to just the sales data for the customer ID, matching the number we pass into the function, our int ID uh, variable. So another bit of string concatenation there. So following that line, we now have the resulting record from that select statement in our object variable RS. Of course, there is a possibility that the customer ID we pass in does not actually have any sales data. If that's the case, we're going to get a null back from the sum total due expression, now known as custrev. You can see the column alias here. So the next little if statement is verifying the value of custrev. And it's basically saying, if it's not a numeric value that comes back, then set the resulting revenue figure to zero. In other words, that customer has not placed any orders with us. Assuming we get a valid customer ID passed in, they have got some sales data, we then pick up the record set field called Custrev and we grab the value for that field and we assign it to our function. You'll notice that all three assignments, so this first one up here where we're testing for an int ID of zero, the second one where we're testing for a non-numeric value, and this last one, all of them, we are assigning the value to the function name itself. And that's how the value is returned from that function. And then finally, we close the record set just to be complete. Now we can test that function in the Visual Basic Editor. And you will see down here, I have an immediate window open, the one I prepared earlier. So in this example, we're passing in the customer ID 13 to 10. And we can see there is indeed some sales data for that customer because that's their total revenue figure. So if I pop in the 11,000 that we saw in our workbook, just hit return on that, and you can see the value of 9115.1341 has come back for that one. So it works. Let's return to our workbook then, and you can now see the mechanics behind it. So we are passing in the 11,000 from cell A703 to the function and there is our formatted value that's coming back to the workbook. So there you have it, extending the capabilities of your Excel workbook by reaching into a SQL Server database, running a select statement and pulling back the values from the resulting record set to use in your workbook. So I hope you've found that helpful.